Hello and welcome to the final day of this international lacrosse showdown. We're playing these games here at Johnson and Wales University over Final Four Memorial Day weekend. Outside of Providence, Rhode Island, we've got seven international teams coming together today. And they have come today together actually for the last three days to play a bunch of games leading up to the 2018 World Lacrosse Championships. This is Connor Wilson for LaxAllStars.com, bringing you the action, a little play-by-play -play and color commentary, all in one, talking to myself, but I'm talking about lacrosse, so it's all good. Opening draw here between Israel Lacrosse and Puerto Rico. These games have represented Puerto Rico's first ever international lacrosse games. We've got a good number of American Heritage players on both of these teams. And an American Heritage player is really somebody who's involved in playing for an international program. Maybe they don't live there right now. Maybe they don't have a passport yet. But their grandparents or their parents may have migrated from their respective country to the United States and their kids play lacrosse. Nice little piece of ball movement to start out. Excellent pass to the crease, good catch and, and a shot, but a fantastic save and Puerto Rico's moving the other way in transition. Goalie stays big, makes the body save, picks up the rebound, finds a streaking midi. Israel pressing the ball a little bit. Puerto Rico did a great job getting back in on defense, getting their six guys in the hole. But Puerto Rico stretches the D a little bit with the outside rip to go up one nothing. About a minute and a half into this game. We're going to play two 20-minute running time halves. Gets you about 40 great minutes of lacrosse. Each team will play or has played each other team once so each team here is getting six games over the course of the weekend we've got puerto rico israel hungary greece jamaica the philippines all coming together all getting good games good experience building some camaraderie Israel possessing now on offense and six on six. Nice pressure there by the Puerto Rico defense to put the ball on the ground. Israel comes up with the ground ball and they'll reset their offense. Just a, uh, a picture perfect alley dodge there. That was Kyle Bergman. Good check by the defender. Dropped his stick, unfortunately. Bergman able to take the alley dodge and find that far off stick high corner on the run. Nice overhand shot, strong fundamentals. Did a great job hiding his stick, making the goalie guess. Puerto Rico wins the draw, down 2 nothing, with 16 and a half minutes left in this first half. Israel not afraid to extend out on defense a little bit. Picking up Puerto Rico players well outside the box. Nice cut through to create some space there. That was a real heads up play by, looks like number 15. Didn't even have the ball in his stick, but still had the presence of mind to make a hard cut from that lefty wing. Through to the crease. Opened up nice space for his teammate, who was able to alley dodge himself, get a great 
shot on the run to fall. That cuts the lead in half. It's now 2-1 to one in favor of Israel. With about 15 and a half minutes to go in this game. Got a procedure call going early against Israel, and Puerto Rico will get another offensive possession here. I'm a big fan of the short format of these games. You know, not only does it allow you to play six games in three or four days, but it also allows you to play a number of different teams. It allows you to try some different things. Uh, but it also puts the pressure on. You know, there's there's no stalling. There's no slowing it down. Uh, teams are really trying to work and get better. So we're getting a we're getting a really solid 40 minutes of action in each of these games. Nice opportunity there. The skip pass over the wing rings one off the pipe. Ball goes out of bounds, but Puerto Rico has the backup. They were closest to it when it went out, so they will retain possession. Look to get another good opportunity, another good shot on Cage. Another great thing about the short games is, you know, some of the games you might win, some you might lose, some might be really tight. You know, a couple might get a little bit out of hand. And that's a great opportunity for your team to face a little adversity and you know, you can run some other guys through. Everybody gets a chance to play. You know, some of these teams are showing up with uh, 18, 19 guys. Other teams are showing up with 27, 28, up, almost up to 30 guys. And it's just a great opportunity for, for all these guys to get to know each other a little bit. It's a good opportunity for the program directors, leaders, coaches to see some of their prospective 2018 players. Nice job there to get back top side. Good physical defense from Israel. Forces that shot wide. Puerto Rico backs it up, and they'll get another chance at it. Big fan of these Puerto Rico helmets. Relatively simple with their logo, Puerto Rico flag logo on the side. It's a great logo. Simple, but involves their flag in the shape of a lacrosse head. But it's just, just a white helmet with this thick blue stripe that runs all the way down the middle, all the way down the middle of the face mask and the chin. It's a, it's a good-looking helmet. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Also very excited to see what happens in, in Puerto Rico uh, over the years. You know, not only bringing in uh, heritage players, but also bringing in, you know, kids, young men, eventually young, young men and women eventually, into the Puerto Rico lacrosse fold. Puerto Rico is not a, a technically a separate country from the United States. It's part of the United States. Puerto Rican people are United States citizens. However, in the Olympics, they do play uh, as a separate nation. World Basketball Championships, they play as a separate nation and, and compete. I'm, I'm very excited to see what they can do with lacrosse. Nice feed from X there. A great shot. Rang off the pipe. Looked like Israel was going to retain possession, but a great ground ball by the Puerto Rico long stick. Moves it down to his attackman. Instead of pushing transition, they're going to settle down a little bit. Still got a 2-1 to one score. Just under 12 minutes left in this first half. Coming at you from Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. We've been pretty fortunate. Uh, getting really pretty excellent weather. It's been uh, relatively dry, nice and cool, uh, allowing these guys to, to go out and run hard the whole time. Might be a little warmer in 2018 in Israel over the summer. Good chance it will also be equally dry. Today it looks like we could get some serious rain. Uh, I know storms have been coming through the northeast and Right now, it looks like we've got some serious rainstorms about two miles off the coast. Maybe maybe it will avoid us. We're all hopeful. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Absolutely. 
Then again, a lacrosse in the rain. For the players, not, not all that bad. Not a ton of fun for the fans. We actually moved up into the press box today, which I think was a very smart move. John Galvin, our video guy, made the executive decision on that one, and uh, he's a smart man. There's no denying it. Cut down the wind a little bit. Good possession here from Puerto Rico, really taking their time. Israel getting pretty aggressive on D, trying to throw some takeaway checks. But the, the refs letting them get away with it, letting them get after it. And for the most part, that's what we've seen. We haven't seen uh, any real cheap shots that I can think of from the last three days. Uh, nothing dirty. You know, guys just coming out, playing hard, and shaking hands afterwards. We saw that yesterday, actually, at the uh, D3 National Championship game. You know, RIT had an unbelievable season, and, you know, they just they came up short against an excellent Salisbury team that had a great game plan, and, you know, they were kind of a fast-paced, high-powered offense, and they slowed it down. There's a nice goal there, a low-to-low skip shot from Puerto Rico as they came around the wing, got top side. Excellent take. But we're watching after after the RIT Salisbury game is over. You know, you've just lost probably the biggest game of your life, and at the end of a lacrosse game, the fact is you shake hands with your opponent, uh, whether they were celebrating or not, and you know whatever's going on, you, you line it up, you shake hands, you, you look your opponents in the eye, and you say good game. That's a, a great thing about sports, uh, being able to deal with winning, deal with losing, show character. And keep the focus on, on what's important, which is continued improvement and testing yourself. And I think we lose track of that sometimes with the professionalization of sports, these huge multi-million dollar contracts, endorsement deals, and celebrity status. Not a lot of that going on out here. Uh, these are guys playing the game because they love it, because they care, because they care more about the name on the front than the name on the back. And honestly, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see in our kind of overly important sports community that we've got going on in, in the U.S. and around the world where you know, unbelievable goal there, fantastic individual effort, kind of pressing topside on the wing, nice inside roll, stay with a strong hand, and puts it through the goalie's legs as he's falling down. And that's going to flip who we got leading right around. Puerto Rico now up 3-2 to two with just under eight minutes to go in this first half. Big face-off coming up here. Puerto Rico's been very strong on the draws. Looks like we got a loose ball push. Ball's going to go with Israel. Israel doing a good job getting the ball around, getting everybody a touch, getting people involved. Nice look up top. Kyle Bergman with a little stutter step gets himself another sh foot of uh, shooting space. And again, with that overhand lefty fundamental shot, able to find a little opening on the far side and put that ball away. And that ties us up at three goals apiece. Got about six and a half minutes left here in the first half. Israel doing a good job winning the clamp there. Coming up with the ground ball. Now that'll look to get a settled clear. You get a good overlook, but can't quite corral the pass. 
Goes off Puerto Rico stick. Israel will retain possession. Good ball movement here, cycling the ball around. Ringing one off the crossbar is Josh Offit. But six or seven passes there for Israel. You couldn't really tell who was going to go. You knew somebody was going to dodge. But off a couple good passes, catch a defender sitting flat foot. Make a quick little move. It's a great opportunity for a shot there. Israel will look to do that again. Initiates with the midfield dodge, pushes the alley, kicks it back up top. Great double team there from Puerto Rico. Come over and apply a little defensive pressure. Couldn't quite handle the pass, but the goalie retains the ball. Good clear by Puerto Rico there. They've worked it back behind. Get it through X. Good dodge to the middle. Comes back to his left. The turnaround shot goes wide by a foot or two. Puerto Rico backs it up. Good little dummy pick at X. Puerto Rico now getting around, get everybody a touch. A lot of people ask why, you know, why do teams cycle the ball around as much as they do? You know, is it just to get everybody a, a touch on the ball? And it's certainly part of the equation. But the other part about it is every time you make a pass, your defender has to readjust his position just a little bit. If you can string together six or seven quick passes, that's six or seven opportunities for your defender to make a slight positional mistake. Maybe that opens up a backdoor cut. Maybe it opens up an on-ball dodge. Um... Maybe it just creates a little bit more space or gets the defense too spread out where they can't slide effectively. Great save there by the Israel goalie. Came across to make the low save. Nice opportunity there for Puerto Rico trying to pull ahead. Got just under two and a half minutes left in this first half. Nodded at three goals apiece. Nice physical defense there. Puerto Rico hanging on to the ball. Moving it around again. Now got a shot clock put on, I think. No visible shot clock. Definitely had a flag down. I'm not sure if, the, if that shot clock call was real. I only saw one ref make the call. He may have also had his hand up, maybe the signal for a penalty. It looks like we've got a slashing call coming against Israel, which will put Puerto Rico on the man up for the last 60 seconds of this first half of lacrosse.
It is running time, so while the penalty is going to be a minute, we've really only got about 30 seconds left when they finally blow it in, 35 seconds left right now. So if Puerto Rico does not score, I would assume that they will hold on to possession and there will be no face-off to start the second, and they'll get about 25 more seconds of man-up. These are all assumptions I'm making. Never never safe to assume anything. That was an absolutely beautiful little kickback pass from X. Rang it off the pipe. Ball traveled all the way up to midfield. The closest guy to it was actually the Israel attackman. Heads up play by their attacker. They are going to end the half with possession. And it looks like although they will start the half man down, they will also start the half with the ball. 3-3 here, Puerto Rico versus Israel. We'll be back after the half. So it looked like we had a, a minute and a half left in the half, but uh, we're going to restart things quickly. Always love that when we can get a, a shorter halftime. So Puerto Rico is going to start your man up, but Israel started with the ball. They had the double team there at the midfield. Good job there to split the D. Awesome opportunity there for a man down goal for Israel, but a fantastic save by the Puerto Rico goalie. Great job there to find the high and away guy on the clear. Puerto Rico no longer on the man up. Penalty has expired. Back to six on six. Got a 3-3 three, three tie here currently. Almost went 4-3 for Puerto Rico, but a great save by the Israel goalie. Good ride there, knocked the ball loose. He said once uh, once the ball was loose, there was a little push or a hold. Ball went back to Israel, but a nice ride, a good pickoff there by the Puerto Rico midfielder. A little hesitation shot, and Puerto Rico gets the ball moving again. Good roll dodge back to the middle. A nice feed inside. I believe that hit the goalie in the shin. I'm not sure he saw it. But a save is a save. <laughs> it, may, it may have gone in. I wouldn't rule that out. I, initially, I thought that ball actually went in as well. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and give the refs the benefit of the doubt and say that it didn't. Two minutes into the second half, we're still nodded at three goals apiece between Israel and Puerto Rico. The Israel program has been active and around since 2012, um, almost immediately competing in European lacrosse championships and the 2014 World Games, the 2015 World Indoors. Puerto Rico, a, a newer FIL international program. But really coming together pretty quickly and... The most exciting thing that I've heard about Puerto Rico lacrosse is the fact that this summer there are 250 kids enrolled in a camp, and the camp focuses on four sports, eight hours per day, and one of those sports is lacrosse. So you're going to have 250 kids on the island, on Puerto Rico, actually directly learning about lacrosse, which is fantastic. I love international lacrosse, uh, but to me the most important thing is not you know, competing at world championships. Um, that's something that you build towards. The, the initial goal is to get kids involved and get kids playing. Um, it's to provide opportunity for people in this country to play a new game and make new friends and work on their character and their conditioning. It's a fantastic save there by the Israel goalie coming up big, pushing that one out. Big rebound. Puerto Rico retains. 
After picking up the loose ball, they're going to move that around now, get it through X. But there are definitely there are definitely countries out there that are doing some amazing homegrown development work. I've been incredibly impressed with the Czech Republic every time I go there. More of a box lacrosse playing country, but they are the real deal. I mean, they have hundreds of little kids playing box lacrosse. They have men's teams. They have a, a league. They've got women's teams. They've got it. It's all going on in the Czech Republic. You go down to Jamaica. They've got a high school lacrosse championships in Jamaica. And high school in Jamaica starts in seventh grade and goes through 12th grade. Bob Marley's grandson plays. The sport is really starting to take off there. They've got some of the, the top academic high schools and got a lot of kids in Kingston playing, kids wearing lacrosse pennies around. Great look down there from up top down to the wing. The low to high smoker tucks it right under the crossbar. And the only drawback for not having rain yet is that if that goal had been soaked, it would have been a great shot to see all that all that mist come off when the ball smacks the net. But hey, if that's the only thing we're missing out on, you know, I'm not I'm not missing it one bit. We did see a couple of high def games shown this year on TV where, you know, the rain was just coming down in buckets. Um, and when the nets really get soaked and then the ball hits it, it does it does create an amazing shot. I don't know if the cold and wind and potential pneumonia is worth it. It's great when you're sitting at home watching on TV. Not as great when you're out in the elements. Just to show you how cold it is, we actually, we actually have a player playing in sweatpants today. So A lot of three-quarter tights out there as well. That was never a thing when I was growing up. And honestly, I you know, I think I'm just jealous. I used to pull a lot of hamstrings and honestly wearing wearing compression pants like that probably helps quite a bit. Nice physical slide, great catch on the crease though to try and get that shot off. Another good body save. Israel keeper is a, a big body. Plays good angles, making some some fundamental stops, just getting his body you know, between the shooter and the goal. On a very basic level, you know, that's what it is. Rung it off the pipe. Israel attacking was close to it, but I, I do think the Puerto Rico midfielder was closer. So Puerto Rico will retain possession off that pipe crank. Probably seen more balls hit off the pipe in this game, maybe than I've seen a whole weekend long. Aggressive D extending out from Puerto Rico, from Israel, sorry. Puerto Rico doing a great job. You know, didn't have anything in the alley dodge. Did a great job faking going to X, going under, getting the shot. But Israel again. Their keeper coming up big. Another big save. Allows them to maintain their 4-3 to three lead. Each team has held at least, at least one lead in this game. Israel scored first. Puerto Rico went up 3-2. Now we see Israel with a 4-3 lead. As predicted, this is turning out to be a, uh, a pretty good game. We, we, you know, we thought that would happen. Good physical dodge there from Israel, but met with an equally physical piece of defense there from Puerto Rico. Midfielder able to push the Israeli midi out of bounds. With 11 and a half minutes left, we've got Puerto Rico in six-on-six six offense. Subbing out a couple guys who just 
took big runs and getting some fresh legs on. They will settle down here and look for the equalizer. Good split dodge to get top side and then a nice roll down the alley. We got a flag. Looks like we got a little. It's probably going to be a slash. That would be my guess. I think, I think he probably caught him on the head. You can see one of the Puerto Rico coaches instructing his players down there on the, the far left-hand side of the field. And this is a great opportunity for national team coaches to come out and see their guys, you know, see some players who are interested. You know, I don't like to see what they can do on the field, you know, see what kind of locker room guys they are. You know, are, they, are they the kind of guys who are going to make players around them better? You know, and if you think these uh, six short games in four days, three days, if you think that's a challenge, wait until you're playing full 80-minute games, you know, eight to ten games over 11 days. It is it is a daunting task. The World Lacrosse Championships is a – it is a tough run. You're only allowed to bring 23 players, you know, and if a guy goes down, there's no replacing him. Um, so, you know, conditioning – Team concepts, having good guys who can respond well to tough situations is incredibly important. Israel called for the slash. And with nine and a half minutes left, Puerto Rico will go on the man up. Try to get that fourth goal to tie this game back up. Get a 0-0 tie, obviously, to start the game, and then a 3-3 tie. Puerto Rico was up 3-2. This has been a really a fun game to watch, a, a very competitive game. Both teams trying some, trying some good stuff. Puerto Rico working the skip pass. Skip pass didn't get through. Ball got all the way back to the goalie. And then we realized that we should have made the over and back call. I like the over and back call personally. I think it's a, a great addition to the game. You know, it doesn't count if it goes off the pipe. Uh, if it goes off the goalie, if it deflects off a defensive stick. But if, if you throw a pass and it goes back over half field, other team gets the ball. We've got eight minutes left here in the second half. Israel with a 4-3 lead, but they throw that one away. Puerto Rico will pick it up in their own end and look to clear the ball. They get it across successfully on the box side. Now kick it back through X. This tough physical D there from Israel. Puerto Rico doing a great job dealing with the pressure. Gets another inside look for their lefty attackman. Great low to low shot, but the goalie read it. Held on to that rebound. Now Israel looking to clear the ball. Both teams have done a very good job showing patience on their clears. Uh, both teams have been riding aggressively. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Puerto Rico extending out there a little bit on the ride. 
Israel got a great look off of it. With the cutting midi, couldn't quite connect in the pass, and it ran out of bounds. Puerto Rico taking over. And when you extend out and you have an aggressive ride, you know, that's the kind of stuff that that can happen. You can get the ball back. You can also give up a, a chaotic transition goal. So it's a risk and reward scenario. Nice fake pass there. Pulls the ball back in. Step down. Didn't quite have it. They're going to give uh, give the ball to Israel defenseman who ran it out. Backed up that shot. Now with five and a half minutes left, Israel with a 4-3 lead. They're back on offense, six on six. Skip pass through up from the top, from Bergman to Offit. And that'll do it. 5-3 now for Israel. Another really solid overhand take. I mean, it, this is fundamental lacrosse. Fundamental lacrosse gets it done. There's a reason they call it fundamentals. Good power, good accuracy. Good ability to catch and shoot in one motion. Great fight there for the ground ball created from that faceoff scrum. Violation gives the ball to Puerto Rico. Check that. Violation gives the ball to Israel. I didn't actually see the violation, but I'm a little bit removed from the action up here in the press box. And yeah, I'm a big believer in just trust referees. They're doing the best job that they possibly can. I've never seen a ref out there trying to intentionally, you know, work some team or <laughs> make the wrong call. I've, I've literally never seen that. Do people make mistakes? Sure they do. We're all human. Good look there to the wing. Couldn't quite bring it in. Puerto Rico looks like they're going to pick up that ground ball. But they ran out of bounds before they were able to throw the ball back in. And Israel will now hold on to possession with under four minutes to go in this game. Nice shovel pass back. Great, great feed across the crease. From the top left to the bottom right. And at that point, if you know if you're playing if you're the goalie playing the top left shooter, it's very hard to get across that six foot goal and catch up to the ball and find that that bottom right scorer. So excellent job there by Israel. Nice ball movement. Gives them a 6-3 lead with just over three minutes to go in this one. Up next on this field, it looks like we have the Philippines and Jamaica. That should be a great game. Both of those teams have been looking really good. Philippines doing a nice job winning some face-offs. Actually, they actually have a couple players from the Philippines playing today, which is fantastic to see. Another good opportunity there. Try and cut that lead into a third, but Israel goalie makes another nice save. A lot of body saves, but as we have said many times, a save is a save. Ball squirts away from the Israel long stick. Puerto Rico is going to pick it up with two minutes to go, down by three. They're going to have to push it. Comeback is not likely, but it's also not out of the question, meaning it's possible. That's a great thing about lacrosse. You got you got to play till the end. Looks like we got a moving pick, turnover. Ball is going to go back with Israel. Just over a minute and a half, a little more than 90 seconds left to go. Yeah, 
Israel looking to increase their lead. Nice save, though, by the Puerto Rico goalie to push that one wide. Israel will retain possession. No over and back there as Puerto Rico picked up the ball. Good look in transition. A nice recovery from the Israel defense. Pass got a little bit away. Israel long stick comes up with the ball. Moves it down the alley. And we've got less than a minute to go, about 50 seconds left. Israel still with a 6-3 lead. Down to 40 seconds now. Israel probably content to just hold the ball and kill time and get out of here with the W. A little rusty gate attempt there from Puerto Rico. Good job by Israel to deal with pressure as we've got 20 seconds left. Trying to feed it inside, deflected by the goalie. Loose ball knocked out with one second to go. And that's going to do it. Guess you can give the Israel goalie that last second save. Israel coming out on top with a 6-3 win over Puerto Rico. Good competitive game, a lot of fun. Given that this game was played at 7 o'clock in the morning, that was some pretty competitive, enjoyable lacrosse. We will be back with another set of games shortly.